One of the functions we might want the control system to fulfill is disturbance rejection, where we want the system behavior to be insensitive to external disturbances. In this video, we model the effect of disturbances on a digital control system, which allows us to set up disturbance rejection requirements. Consider this block diagram of a discrete time control system with equivalent discrete time plant model GHO G of Z, controller D of Z, reference input R of K, measured plant output Y of K, and disturbance signal W of K that acts on the plant output before it is measured. We want to describe the effect of the disturbance signal on the measured output with the goal of designing the controller to minimize the effect of the disturbance. To do this, we write from the block diagram that the Z-transform of the measured output is the Z-transform of the disturbance signal plus the loop transfer function times the Z-transform of the reference input minus the measured output. This relationship is shown here. After rearranging things, we can write the output signal as this transfer function times the reference input plus this transfer function times the disturbance signal. We want to look at the effect of only the disturbance on the output, so we set the reference input to be zero, which allows us to write the transfer function from the disturbance input to the measured output as 1 divided by 1 plus the loop transfer function. This transfer function is usually called the sensitivity function and is denoted by S. We usually want to minimize the effect of the disturbance on the output, which means that we want the gain of the sensitivity function to be small, especially for the range of frequencies that we expect to be present in the disturbance signal. Another way to analyze the effect of the disturbance is to calculate the steady state output in response to a specific disturbance signal. Let's work through the case where the disturbance is a step signal and calculate the steady state output value. If the step size is given by constant A, the Z transform of the disturbance signal is given by AZ divided by Z minus 1. Using the final value theorem, we can write the steady state value of the output as the limit as Z tends to 1 of Z minus 1 times the Z transform of the output which is given by the Z-transform of the disturbance signal times the sensitivity function. When we substitute the expression for the disturbance signal as well as the sensitivity function, simplify things and apply the limit to the numerator and denominator, we get the steady state output to be A divided by 1 plus the limit as Z tends to 1 of the loop transfer function. To minimize the steady state output value due to the disturbance, we have to maximize this limit. In general, the larger the controller gain, the smaller the effect of the disturbance on the steady state output. If we want the effect of the disturbance on the steady state output to be zero, then the loop transfer function should have at least one pole at z equal to one, which means that the limit tends to infinity and the steady state value is then zero. An important fact to realize is that this analysis of the effect of the disturbance on the output depends on the location where the disturbance feeds into the system. For example, if the disturbance signal is added to the plant input or after the measured output, then we would have to redo the analysis. To illustrate these concepts, let's work through a simple example. Suppose the continuous time plant is described by the transfer function 1 over s plus 2 and the sampling period is 0 0.5 seconds. Then it can be shown that the equivalent discrete time plant model is given by 0 0.3161 divided by z minus 0 0.3679. Also suppose that the controller is a proportional controller with gain k. The sensitivity function is then calculated as shown here. For large values of the gain k, increasing the gain will decrease the gain of the transfer function as expected. If the disturbance is given by a unit step, then we can calculate the steady state output due to the disturbance by using the result of the previous page, which turns out to be 1 divided by 1 plus 0 0.5 times k. 
Here we see again that increasing the controller gain will decrease the effect of the disturbance on the output. By specifying the maximum steady state value of the output in response to a step disturbance input, we can now translate it to a minimum acceptable controller gain. If we require the steady state output to be zero, then we can also translate it to a specification of the structure of the controller, since it might be necessary to add a pole at z equal to 1 to meet this requirement.